this is Julie from Soul Spark with Art. I'm going to be showing you how to draw this phoenix today. Now, you only need a few supplies. You need a black marker or crayon, and you need some fire color crayons to color him in. So you're going to need a yellow, and then you're going to need two or three fire colors. So I'm going to be using yellow and a light orange, a dark orange, and a red. And then you're going to need cool colors for the background. Or you might choose to put your phoenix flying over mountains or an ocean, and that's totally up to you. Now, I used a color for the background here, and this one's called Outer Space. And it's kind of a dark blue, kind of a black, but I might even choose to use black today for my background. So the background is totally up to you. But I'm going to show you how to draw this phoenix and how to color him in so you get that fiery effect. So I'm going to put him to the side, get out a piece of paper, and the first thing I'm going to do is take the top and I'm going to hold it down to touch his toes and back up again. Now the reason I put the crease in the paper today is because I want to be able to draw a magnificent tail for my phoenix. And do you see his belly? If his belly ends up too low to the bottom of the paper, then I won't have room for this tail. So you can see that the belly goes just underneath this crease. So this crease is just gonna help me remember to not go too far with that belly. So go ahead and get your marker out and put the cap on the back end or nearby so you don't lose it and locate the top of your paper. So I'm gonna start by drawing the beak of the phoenix. Now I don't want my phoenix beak to be too big because then the head's gonna to be too big and then he won't fit on my paper. So I'm gonna draw a rainbow line that's gonna go right into the corner and it's not gonna to be too long, maybe about the size of your pinky finger. And then I'm gonna draw a curved line coming out. There's his beak. I'm gonna draw a line in the middle because he's gonna to need to open and close it, right? And I'm gonna move into the crest of feathers on his head. So these feathers right here, he's got this fun hairdo. So I'm gonna draw that next. I'm gonna start at the top of the beak. I'm gonna come out and I'm just gonna draw a zigzag line. Give him some fancy feathers on his head. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw his eye. So you can draw whatever kind of eye you want. I'm gonna draw a rainbow line and a happy line. I'm gonna give him a pupil by giving him a curved line and then another little tiny curved line and I'm going to color in the middle part of that so it looks like the light's reflecting off of his eye. The next thing I'm gonna do is draw a letter J for his belly. Now when I draw his belly, remember I said we don't wanna to go too far past this. So I'm gonna stick my finger just a little bit past that crease. I'm gonna come up to his feathers. I don't wanna start the line at the, at the edge of his feathers. I wanna move it in just a little bit. I want him to have a skinnier neck. So I'm gonna put my finger right here I'm going to start my line up at the feathers and I'm going to draw a letter J. It's going to come down and it's going to swoop just like the letter J. Now I'm going to come back up to his feathers. And again, I don't want him to have a giant neck. I want him to have a thinner neck. So I'm going to start my next line right about here. Now this next line is going to come down and then it's going to loop up like the letter U. So it's going to come down. It's going to loop up like the letter U, and then this line's gonna slowly curve towards the other corner of the page. It came up, so that is gonna be his wing. Now I'm gonna leave that line just hanging out there for a minute. I'm gonna come about halfway in that line of his wing, and I'm gonna draw a scallop line. Now a scallop line is a bump, 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 bump bump, bump, bump. And I'm gonna leave it right there. Now that's the inner part of his wing. And now we can go back and we can work on the rest of these big long feathers. Now each one of these feathers is gonna connect to this scallop line that we just drew. So this first one, I'm gonna turn the line around and I'm gonna come straight back and connect it. Now every single feather that we connect is going to connect to the one that we just drew but they're gonna get smaller and smaller as they slowly go 
into and around to form the wing. So I'm gonna come back up, and instead of coming right here where this feather is that long, I'm gonna move it just a little bit in, draw a curved line, and connect it to that scallop line. I'm gonna come a little bit more in, draw my curved line, and then connect it. So they're slowly going to get a little bit shorter. I wanna make sure I actually connect it. So come back, curve line, connect, and keep making them a little bit shorter and shorter and shorter and keep connecting it to that scallop line that you're drawing or that you already drew. I'm gonna draw a couple more, one more and then I'm going to stop. The next thing we're gonna do is draw the back of the phoenix and we're gonna actually work right into the tail. So right where we stopped our feather, we're gonna come up to that scallop line. We're gonna draw a curve line going down and it's going to come up and it's going to spiral. That is his back and that first part of his tail. Now the rest of his tail is gonna be done in these spirals. Do you see these spirals right here? So this is the line that we just did. And we're gonna continue drawing spirals and they're gonna go slowly towards this part of the paper. So this next one, instead of connecting this line, I'm just gonna put my marker right in there. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna go this way this time. And if you went the other way, then that's fine because you want these lines, these little um, spirals to go every which way, but you just want to draw the spiral slowly going this way. So this one is going to spiral that way. Draw another one that'll spiral this way. And I'm slowly gonna draw more and more spirals so that they come in this direction and they fill up this side of the paper. So we're drawing his tail. Now at this time, our phoenix is actually done. So you can go and add whatever you want to your background. I'm gonna actually give my phoenix kind of these polka dots for the background. Maybe a big polka dot and a little one attached to it. But you can do whatever you want for your background. So feel free right now to add in anything that you want your phoenix to be flying over. Add lots of polka dots. Okay, so my phoenix is swimming and it almost looks like he's swimming or flying through a sea of bubbles. So we're actually gonna color our phoenix first. I want you to get out your yellow and we are gonna color every part of the phoenix yellow except his eye. And we're not gonna color his tail yellow just yet because we're gonna do it different. We're gonna stop right here where these lines didn't connect. So just so I remember, I'm gonna start here. And I'm not gonna go past that. And I'm just going to color yellow. So what I'm doing is I'm actually coloring an undercoat for my Phoenix. So the underside of him is very, very yellow. And when I start putting the other colors on top of him, that yellow is going to show through. come up and color his face and his beak. His beak is actually gonna stay yellow, but the other colors we're gonna use are gonna go all over this yellow. Go around his eye, and then I'm gonna get up into his wing. Now, don't be afraid to turn your paper. If your paper, if it's easier for you to color by turning your paper this way, then that's exactly what you should do. You don't ever have to keep your, your piece of paper in one position. Now, like I said, since all of this is gonna be yellow, I'm just gonna color all the way over. I can color over these black lines. This black marker is still going to share, uh, it's still gonna go right through so you can still see it. I'm adding my undercoat. back here, finish this underwing, and 
And then when I'm done with this wing, I'm not gonna put my yellow uh, crayon away just yet. I'm actually going to keep it out and I'm gonna work on the tail next. Okay, so he's pretty yellow. He's kind of like a duck or a chicken. I'm gonna actually come to the tail and instead of coloring like this, like I kind of was doing, oh, maybe color a little bit closer, I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna follow the lines that I just did in my black marker with my yellow crayon, just like this. And I'm not gonna worry if they're, if they're on top of the black, I just want it close to the black. And I want to do the same type of spiral as I did for these ones with the black. So if this spiral goes this way, then that's the way my crayon is going to go too. And then I am done with my yellow. I'm gonna put my yellow to the side and get out my light orange. Now I'm gonna leave my Phoenix's beak yellow. And I'm gonna start in and I'm going to color right on top of the yellow with this light orange. Now anywhere where I didn't do a good job coloring in with yellow is now gonna have orange there. So you're gonna have spots where it's just orange. You're gonna have spots where the orange and the yellow are mixing. And that's gonna make him very interesting looking. And once again, we are going to do the same thing with the tail. So if you get there before I do, go ahead and color your Phoenix with that light orange color. And then you're gonna use that light orange and you're going to once again follow those, um, follow those tail lines. And your light orange might go right on top of the, um, right on top of those lines. Now when we get to these primary feathers, if you already colored all of them light orange, that is one way to do it. Another way to do the primary feathers is to draw a light orange stripe in the middle of each of these feathers. So we can end up making his primary feathers look pretty unique. Now, if you ended up drawing or coloring the light orange on top of the yellow for these primary feathers already, then that is absolutely fine. And you can do this with the next color that we're gonna be using. So there's my light orange. I'm gonna put the light orange to the side and I'm going to get out my dark orange. Now this time, actually I'm gonna do the same thing with my dark orange as I did with the light orange. So once again, I'm going to go over the face. I'm gonna go really lightly with the, the uh, darker orange over because there's, you can see it's a lot darker, but you'll start seeing the yellow and the light orange showing up. I'm gonna use some light strokes following my lines. So instead of coloring this way, these lines go this way. So I want my crayon to go that way too. You can see I'm not actually fully coloring. I'm adding kind of what end up looking like stripes. You can do either. I'm gonna also come up here. And these lines kind of went this way. So these, when I color this in, these lines are gonna go in the direction of the feathers. Now for these feathers, if you did this way where you drew a light orange line, you're gonna put in a dark orange line right on top. If you had already colored your feathers with the light orange, then you're gonna draw a dark orange line right in the center of your feather. So you might end up having two colors of stripes so far, you might end up having one. putting my dark orange stripes in. And then I'm gonna come back and I am, oh no, I forgot to do the light orange tail. So I'm gonna come back and do that first with my light orange. If 
follow the tail. And I bet if you're following along, you were thinking, she forgot the tail. I did forget this tail. You are right. So I'm gonna do the light orange and then I'm gonna do the dark orange. And once again, I am following the lines that I drew with my spirals with my black and I'm just building the colors on top of each other. Okay, now I'm going to get out my red. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different with my red and I'm actually going to kind of do the outline. So instead of coloring directly on his face, I'm going to color around where I drew my black lines, except for, for the beak. So I'm going to color around the edges of his head. I'm going to color down his belly. And I'm adding a little bit of shading. I'm going to color around the edges of the scallop and around the edges of his wing. So let's do the edges of his wing first. just layering and layering colors. And then I'm gonna add a red line right above that dark orange for those feathers. Now you might have run out of room and that's okay. You can just try to get the red in there as much as you can. You can see I ran out of room for some of my feathers too. And I'm just putting it right on the top anyway. Okay, so I'm almost done with my red. I'm gonna take my red and I'm going to come along the back here and I'm going to, again, with the tail feathers, with my spirals. I bet you you knew we were going to do that. And then my phoenix is done. So then you can go ahead and you can select what colors you wanna use for your background. Now I did polka dot, so I'm actually just gonna come through and I'm just gonna do some green and some purple polka dots, I think. Now you might have drawn something a little bit more elaborate in the background or have a rainbow or a castle or an ocean, an island. You can go ahead and do whatever you want for your Phoenix's background. And I'm just keeping it simple with mine. And actually, let's see, here's a light blue. I'll choose this light blue for this other polka dot. My purple crayon ran away. And then for the background, I'm gonna choose a cool color or something dark. So my Phoenix is made of warm colors. That means colors of fire, black, uh, not black, red and orange and yellow. So I want my background to be very cool. And I'm actually just gonna use a black crayon. Now I'm gonna color around the tail first just to show you you can get really close up to the colors of his tail, but make sure that you don't color over it this time because you use yellow and sometimes yellow is not gonna be happy if you put a dark color on top of it. It won't show up. So you can just get your dark color in there or whatever color you chose. You see how I'm kind of staying away. I'm leaving some white space and that's okay this time. Just coloring around it. So for this one, I might go in a little bit, but I'm still leaving plenty of room for that fiery tail to show up. Same thing with over here. I'm just diving into the tail feather just a little bit. Coming down here to color. 
and I'm choosing not to press very hard with my crayon today. So this, this background color almost looks more like a dark gray than it does a black, doesn't it? Now you might choose to press harder with your crayon and you're gonna get a different result. So this is just light coloring. And again, don't be afraid to turn your paper around as you're coloring, especially the background, to make sure that it helps. Your hand won't get as tired sometimes if you're able to turn your paper to kind of help it a little bit. Oops. I'm going around my polka dots. Or actually, I can imagine that my phoenix is flying through a sea of bubbles, which would also be super cool. And as I'm finishing up, coming around the head, Now, if you're loving this phoenix, I also have a how to draw a mermaid and there's a unicorn and there's a dragon. So feel free to take a look at those and draw those as well. And my next mythical creature that I'm going to be working on is a fairy. So there is my phoenix. And you can see I pressed a lot lighter than I did here where I got a darker color. So you might choose to do a lighter background or a darker background. But there's my Phoenix and I hope you enjoyed and had a wonderful time. And like I said, keep an eye out for that fairy. That fairy will be coming um, in another week or two. The next one that you're gonna see uh, here is a whale. So hopefully you enjoy your Phoenix and have a wonderful day.